Hi guys, welcome back to Kids Time. Today, I'll be reading you a book called Winnie the Pooh and Some Bees. This book is adapted by Stefan Krensky and with decorations by Ernest H. Shepherd. Chapter 1, in which Pooh makes his first appearance. Once upon a time, a very long time ago now, about last Friday, Winnie the Pooh lived in a forest under the name of Sanders. One day when he was out walking, he came to an open place in the middle of the forest. And in the middle of this place was a, was a large oak tree. From the top of the tree, there came a loud buzzing noise. Winnie the Pooh began to think that buzzing means something, he said to himself. You don't get a buzzing noise like that just buzzing and buzzing without it meaning something. If there's a buzzing noise, somebody's making a buzzing noise. And the only reason for making a buzzing noise that I know of is because you're a bee. Then he thought another long time and said, And the only reason for being a bee that I know of is making honey. And then he got up and said, And the only reason for making honey is so as I can eat it. So he began to climb the tree. He climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And as he climbed, he sang a little song to himself. Isn't it funny how a bear likes honey? Bzz, bzz, bzz. I wonder why he does. Then he climbed a little further and a little further. And then just a little further. By that time, he had a thought of another song. It's a very funny thought that if bears were bees, they build their nest at the bottom of trees. And that being so, if the bees were bears, we wouldn't have to climb up all these stairs. He was rather getting tired now, but he was nearly there. And if he just stood on that branch, crack! Oh, help, said Pooh, dropping ten feet to the branch below him. If only I hadn't, he said, as he bounced twenty feet onto the next branch. You see what I meant to do, he explained, as he turned head over heels and crashed through the next six branches. Then he spun round three times and flew gracefully into a gorse bush. It all comes of lacking honey so much, he said. Oh, help! He, cr he crawled out of the gorse bush, brushed the pickles from his nose, and began to think again. And the first person he thought of was Christopher Robin. Chapter 2 In which Pooh's feature becomes cloudy. So Winnie the Pooh went round to his friend Christopher Robin, who lived behind a green door in another part of the forest. Good morning, Christopher Robin, he said. Good morning, Winnie the Pooh, said Christopher Robin. I wonder, said Pooh, if you've got such a thing as a balloon about you. A balloon? What do you want a balloon for? asked Christopher Robin. Winnie the Pooh looked around to see that no one was listening. Honey, he said in a deep whisper. But you can't get honey with balloons, said Christopher Robin. I do, said Pooh. Christopher Robin had never had been to the party the day before the at the house of his friend Piglet. There had been many balloons at the party. He had brought a green one and a blue one home with him. Which balloon would you like? Christopher Robin asked. Pooh put his head between his paws and thought very carefully. It's like this, he said. When you go after honey with a balloon, the great thing is not to let the bees know you're coming. Have a green balloon, they might think you are part of the tree and not notice you. And if you have a blue balloon, they might think you are part of the sky and not notice you. Wouldn't they notice you underneath the balloon, asked Christopher Robin. They might or they might not, said Pooh. You can never tell with bees, he thought for a moment. I shall try to look like a small black cloud. That will deceive them. Then you better have the blue balloon, said Christopher Robin. And so it was decided. 
They both went out with the blue balloon, and Christopher Robin took his gun with him, just in case. And Winnie the Pooh went to a very muddy place and rolled and rolled and rolled until he was black all over. When the balloon was blown up as big as big, Christopher Robin and Pooh both held on to the string. Then Christopher Robin let go suddenly and Pooh Bear floated up into the sky. He stayed there, level with the top of the tree and about 20 feet from it. Hooray! shouted Christopher Robin. What do I look like? Winnie the Pooh shouted down to him. You look like a bear holding onto a balloon, said Christopher Robin. Not, said Pooh anxiously, not like a small black cloud in a blue sky. Not very much. Perhaps from here it looks different, said Pooh. And as I say, you can never tell with these. There was no wind to blow him nearer to the tree, so he stayed there. Pooh could see the honey. He could smell the honey, but he couldn't quite reach the honey. Chapter 3 In which Pooh refines his plan After a little while, he called down to Christopher Robin. I think the bees suspect something, Pooh said in a loud whisper. What sort of thing? asked Christopher Robin. I don't know, said Pooh, but something tells me they're suspicious. Perhaps they think that you're after their honey. It may be that, said Pooh. You can never tell with these. There was another little silence. Then Pooh called down again. Christopher Robin! Yes, shouted Christopher Robin. Have you an umbrella in your house? I think so, said Christopher Robin. I wish you would bring it out here, said Pooh. I think if you did that, it would help with the bees. So Christopher Robin went home for his umbrella. Oh, there you are, called Pooh. When he got back, I have discovered the bees are now definitely suspicious. Should I put my umbrella up? said Christopher Robin. Yes, said Pooh, and walk up and down with it. Then look at me and say, tut, tut, it looks like rain. I shall do what I can by singing a little cloud song, such as a cloud might sing. So while Christopher Robin walked up and down and wondered if it will rain, Winnie the Pooh sang the song. How sweet to be a cloud, floating in the blue. Every little cloud always sings aloud. How sweet to be a cloud, floating in the blue. It makes them very proud to be a little cloud. Chapter 4 In which Pooh changes his mind. The bees were still buzzing as suspiciously as ever. Some of them, indeed, left their nest and flew round the cloud as it began the second verse of his sound, song. One bee even sat down on the nose of the cloud for a moment, then got up again. Christopher, ow, Robin, called out the cloud. Yes, I have just been thinking and I have come to a very important decision. These are the wrong sort of bees. Are they? Quite the wrong sort, the cloud went on. So I think they would make the wrong sort of honey. Would they? Yes. So I think I shall come down. How? asked Christopher Robin. Pooh hadn't thought of that. If he let go of the string, he would fall, bump. And he didn't like the idea of that. So he thought for a long time, and he said, Christopher Robin, just shoot the balloon with your gun, but if I do that, I'll spoil the balloon. But if you don't, said Pooh, I shall have to let go, and that would spoil me. When Pooh put it like that, Christopher Robin saw how it was. He aimed very carefully at the balloon and fired. Ow, said Pooh, did I miss? asked Christopher Robin. You didn't exactly miss, said Pooh, but you missed the balloon. I'm so sorry, said Christopher Robin, and he fired again. This time he hit the balloon, and the air sl came slowly out, and Winnie the Pooh floated to the ground. But his arms were so stiff from holding the balloon all that time that they stayed in the air for more than a week. And whenever a fly came and settled on his nose, 
you'd have to blow it off. And I think, but I am not sure. And that is why he was always called Pooh. Thank you for watching my video. Remember, if you liked it, press like and subscribe. Bye!